Because, yeah, Heather said she'd be a few minutes late. I got Charlie here, too. Excellent. And then once they're set, Andy's ready. All right, and we got Charlie. Are we uh, are we good to go, Adam? Or all right. Call to order the meeting of the City Council Board of Review at uh, six o two p.m. on August twenty fourth, twenty twenty. We'll begin with the roll. All right, Oliver Cronin. Present. Oliver and Journey. Here. Oliver and Kemp. Here. Oliver and Cole. Here. Oliver and Posey. Here. Oliver and Reiki is uh, absent. Oliver person Touche. Right here. Oliver and Ryan. Here. And Mayor Diaz. Here. And I am present as well. <clears throat> Excellent. So we have a quorum and, and we expect all the Riki to join us shortly. Uh, next up, we have item three, which is approval of the minutes from the May 11th, 2020 Board of Review meetings. Questions, comments, motions? Move approval. Uh, motion by Alder Kemp. Is there a second? Second. Second, second I think, by Alder Touche. Uh, last chance for corrections. Yep. Seeing, <laughs> seeing no hands. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes from the May 11, 2020 Board of Review meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. And the minutes are approved. Um, next up, we'll move on to item four, which is appointment of the Board of Review Chair. I've done it in the past. I can keep doing it if people want. If someone wants to take a crack at running a Zoom meeting, um, <laughs> you can raise your hand, I guess. <laughs> um, all right, I will, I will ask for unanimous consent to allow me to continue as chair of the Board of Review. All right, seeing no objections, we'll move on to uh, uh, item five, which is the report by the city assessor regarding the citywide reevaluation and taxpayer objection procedures. Uh, Mr. Peters. Thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? Great. All right, well, um, the long awaited results of the citywide revaluation are almost here. Um, I'm planning to mail out the notices of assessment to all property owners uh, on Friday. So hopefully they should hit the mail by, I suppose, Monday at the latest. Um, and uh, the preliminary results are um, showing about a 28% increase overall in assessed value for the city. Now that does include new construction. Um, so if you factor out the new construction, it's a little bit less and I'll have all those statistics available at the time um, we start taking calls and everything. And um, there may be some information I can put together as well that I could um, send out to, to Adam or to Alan who could forward that information to you just, to, just for some big picture understanding of the assessment changes. But really, we are revaluing everybody from scratch. So I'm not starting with what the assessed value was on the books before. We're throwing out all the old assessed values completely. Um, and we're going to the sales, sales of land, sales of homes, sales of commercial properties. And we are starting with that information as a basis to value everybody else. And the idea then is that the new assessments should represent 100% of the value that you could sell the house for as of January 1st of 2020. Um, state law says assessments are always as of January 1st, even though we're you know, well into the pandemic and things feel a whole lot different now than they did on January 1st, we're still um, looking at a January 1st valuation by law. Um, it's going to be, uh, I, know, I know what to expect, there's probably going to be some sticker shock, so to speak, that, you know, how can the assessment go up this much in one year, and the the thing to understand is that if the assessments are going up a lot, it's it's on paper one year, but in reality, it's uh, all the way back to I think 2000, was it 2011? The last time there was a full revaluation in the 
in the in the city, I think. Um, and so really we're dealing with a long period of market appreciation that never was really accounted for in the assessed values. What the assessor did in the intervening years is they looked at new construction, they looked at building permits, um, but really they didn't make changes for market conditions. And now uh, the assessed values are significantly behind the times in terms of what properties are selling for, and obviously they have to increase. Um, another important point to make is that these increases in assessed value are not going to generate more tax revenue for the city. There are some people out there who think that the only reason assessments get raised is to drum up more tax revenue, and that's a complete misconception. Nothing there that I do will bring in more revenue for the city. If the city needs more revenue, you just uh, adjust your levies. You don't need me for that. Um, really what the assessed values do is they apportion that tax levy fairly amongst all the taxpayers in the city. Um, and the longer you go without a revaluation, the more uh, market conditions change, properties change, and the assessed values may not really be uniform and fair compared to what properties are selling for. You may have older homes selling for something different than newer homes, condominiums, something different, um, maybe higher end homes versus starter homes. There's all kinds of different changes that happen in the market over time. So one of the end results is that the assessed values do not go up at a uniform uh, level for everybody. Um, it is totally normal for somebody to go up maybe 25% and then their neighbor go up 30%. And obviously the person who goes up 30% might ask, well, why am I going up more? Well, the answer would be that your assessment was behind the times a little further than the other person was. And so you needed to go up that much to get to, uh, to a fair selling price for your property. Um, and so these are general questions that we're going to hear. Um, it's pretty much standard fare for revaluations that, that we have a lot of these kinds of questions. Um, we have scheduled our open book meeting uh, for two days for September 10th and 11th. That's a Thursday and Friday. Um, we are going to encourage property owners to contact us by phone to have their open book sessions. Um, and I'll have a number of assessors standing by that to assist me with those uh, open book phone calls, but we're also going to offer the option to come into the city hall and meet in person. And so we'll have several assessors available at city hall as well for that. Uh, I'm not really sure what to expect for turnout in person versus over the phone, but we've been doing this for other municipalities we work for. And uh, it seems to be the preferences to, uh, to speak over the phone and that's fine. Um, if we need to exchange documents, we can do that by email and, and other means. Uh, so usually that works all right. Um, so the purpose of the open book meeting is to uh, have a dialogue with the property owner. Um, the books are open, so you're free to, to look at what your neighbors are assessed at, to ask questions, to understand how the values were arrived at, maybe what sales we looked at as a basis for those values, uh, maybe how, the, how your neighborhood changed in value uh, compared to some other neighborhoods in the city. Um, and if you have any other information that you'd like us to consider that we may not have considered, then we're happy to do that. If you recall, we did an exterior only revaluation. So there's always, it's always possible that somebody would have information about the interior of their home, or maybe they have other kind of information like a, a refinance appraisal or something that we wouldn't have known about that they want us to consider. Um, we can make changes to the assessed values at open book, um, but I don't expect that, you know, some will change, some will not, I guess, depending on what kind of information we get. Um, and then Board of Review, we're here tonight to decide, um, I guess, to approve the final Board of Review meeting, um, which I have penciled in as Tuesday, September 29th. Um, what I'm expecting is that anybody who comes to the final Board of Review will already have talked to me. Um, I would prefer to have a conversation with the property owner, understand their concerns, make sure that I'm aware of all the information that they think is relevant to their assessment. And if there's any way that we can resolve the, the concern of the property owner, we'll make every effort to do that so that the Board of Review is just left for situations where the assessor and the property owner cannot come to an agreement. And when I present my case to the board, if we have a hearing, I would like to be able to say that this is the same exact information that I told the property owner. This is the same comparable information I showed the property owner. And, uh, and here is why I think the assessment is correct. Um, I don't know yet what to expect for how many hearings we're gonna have. Um, my guess if, is we'll have several. Um, I would say somewhere between five and 10 is my best, my best guess for hearings. Um, and 
I would ask, don't, don't judge based on how many people we get, how good of a job we did, because it really is, can't be measured that way. Sometimes uh, we can do a great job and come in with assessments that are right on, the, right on the money for market value, and you just have some stubborn people that insist on going to board of review. And uh, I'm not going to lower somebody unless it's warranted. I'm not going to lower people's assessments at open book just to get them not to come to board. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be the right thing to do. So if, if uh, but I'll do my best to try to explain and defend those values. So hopefully the property owners accept them and, and recognize that, that there isn't anything more that I can do to help them. Um, the process for property owners to sign up for board of review will be that they need to contact the clerk, that's Ellen, um, and they need to do that at least 48 hours before the meeting. So if the meeting is on a Tuesday at 5.30, then it would have to be the Sunday at 5.30, they would have to contact Ellen at the latest to say that uh, they wanna sign up for board of review. Um, they do need to fill out a written objection form. This is a state prescribed form. You can Google it out on the Department of Revenue's website or you can find it in the Guide for Property Owners. I think, Ellen, maybe we can have a link to that on the website if need be. Um, but the, It's a one page objection form and you do need to uh, state in writing what you think the market value or the, the fair assessed value of your property would be. Um, you cannot proceed with an objection if the property owner hasn't filled out an objection form and hasn't stated their opinion of the value on the objection form. And so that's, of course, what the value they're asking for for the assessment to be. Um, and, uh, and then I think, Ellen, I'm not sure exactly what your process will be, but if somebody contacts you and wants to sign up, um, Will you be able to give them an appointment time right away, or do you want the board to set the appointment times? That might be a question we should get answered. I think I, later. I think I can give them an appointment time. Yeah, unless, unless the board would like me to do something different, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to do that. I would suggest, I think it works pretty well if you just leave the first 15 minutes or so on the agenda clear for the board to have their preliminary, um, you know, the roll call and all the formalities and then, uh, and then start in with the hearings. And what I tend to have, what I tend to find is there's a lot of people who sign up at the last minute and some of them are people who haven't even talked to me yet. And as soon as I see that somebody on a board of review schedule and I know that this isn't somebody I've talked to, I'm gonna be proactive, give them a call and there's always a possibility that I can make a late open book change for that person if it's warranted and they would withdraw their objection. So this might be kind of a, a moving target as far as uh, if, if you, if Ellen, if all of a sudden you have five appointments and two of them end up withdrawing, well then you could reuse those appointment slots for somebody else I would suggest. And then maybe, um, you know, provide a, a final list to the board members shortly before the meeting. Um, but I guess when I'm done talking, the board can, these are some of the things you can talk about and decide. Um, a few more things on the final meeting. Um, I'm going to, at the beginning of the meeting, I'm going to submit the final assessment role that will include all the open book changes I've made and it'll be a listing of every taxable property with what the assessed values are after open book. I'm gonna sign the assessor's affidavit, meaning that to the best of my knowledge, all the assessments are true and correct. And, and then at that point, um, the board can basically begin. Um, the format for the, the hearings, if we have scheduled hearings, would be typically the clerk would introduce the hearing and then um, the property owner presents their case first. And, uh, and so the property owner would have to come up, you know, if we're doing this by Zoom, um, I guess we have to make sure the property owner can, uh, can see us and hear us and everything and be able to present their testimony and anything that they want to present as evidence. They have to do this under oath, so they'll have to be a swearing in, uh, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Um, and then uh, when they've presented their testimony, the board can ask questions of the property owner, and the assessor can ask questions of the property owner. And then at that point, um, it's the assessor's turn to speak. Um, Typically what I present is I give you a copy of the property record cards so that you have the basic information about that property, um, the assessed value, things like the lot size, the year built of the house and the square footage and that type of information, some photos. So if I have enough preparation time, I would be able to put that information together in advance in a packet. Otherwise I could use a screen share or something like that here on Zoom and show it on my screen. One way or another, I will have 
information like that to show the board. Um, and then I'll try to rebut any concerns that the property owner has and defend the assessment with whatever sales comparables and so on that I have. Um, the board, after I'm done speaking, the board can ask me questions, the property owner can ask me questions. And then uh, the property owner and the assessor at the end both get a chance to sort of summarize or recap their, their case and add additional information. Um, but we should try to keep the cases moving so that um, say the property owner doesn't continue to repeat the same thing five or six times and, and we're not getting anywhere. It's, it's, or if the property owner wants to keep talking when it's not their turn to talk, that type of thing should be kept in check by the, um, the board chair. But at some point you have to cut off the testimony and say this uh, hearing is over and move into deliberations. The board can either deliberate individually after each hearing or you can wait to the end and do all your deliberations in a row. Um, either way is acceptable. Um, my suggestion would be take notes during the time that I'm talking and during the time that the property owner is talking because you will not be able to ask either of us any questions during deliberations. Uh, the way this works is at the time you end the hearing, if you were to ask a question of the assessor, is this what you said or does, is this what you meant, that would be adding additional testimony and I'm not allowed to do that after the close of the hearing. So try to make up your mind, try to, try to decide, hey, do I think the assessor is correct here or do I think the property owner has enough information that, that we should uh, change the assessment for the property owner? Um, and try to do that before the close of the hearing because that's the time when you're still able to ask those questions. And then when you deliberate, it's just a matter of discussing amongst yourselves and somebody making a motion. Um, I make a motion to sustain the assessment at what the assessor set it at, or I make a motion to adjust the assessment based on evidence presented. And if you adjust the assessment, you have to choose the specific amount you're gonna adjust it to. Um, typically you break it down by land improvements in total, just like it is in the assessment role, and make a motion. Now it's important to remember that the assessor is presumed correct. The reason being number one, the assessor is the person who's trained and certified in how to assess property. And number two, uh, the assessor has signed a statement on the front of the assessment role that it's true and correct. So the property owner is in the position of overcoming that presumption of correctness with their testimony. And you as a board will have to decide, has the property owner brought enough information that um, they've overcome this presumption of correctness that the assessor has by law? And if so, well, then you can proceed to change the assessed value. And of course, that has to be done by, um, by a majority vote and it's a roll call vote. Um, if any of the assessments, well, whether or not the assessments are changed, the property owner gets a notice of board of review determination that comes from Ellen. Ellen, if you'd like, I could have my staff members even pre-fill those forms for you so it's a little less work for you. Um, and then all you'd have to do is write in the final determination from the board. Um, but in any case, um, those can be either hand delivered or mailed. And if they're mailed, they have to be by certified mail. And after that, after all the hearings are done, the board of review is over. If anybody were to walk in without an appointment, I suppose I have to say walk in because it's a Zoom meeting, but if any of them zoomed in and said, um, yeah, I'm here to object. I didn't make an appointment in advance. What do I need to do? Um, the board potentially could hear this person, but what you're supposed to do is find out if they had good cause for failing to uh, file with Ellen 48 hours in advance. And the, the state suggests that boards should be fairly strict with their good cause because this 48 hour requirement is plastered all over the notice of assessment and the notices that Ellen prints and all the state educational materials. And it's a burden on the assessor and, and the board if, if you have to have hearings that weren't planned for in advance. Worst case scenario, we could meet again and have a hearing at a later date, but um, otherwise, uh, if the property owner doesn't have good enough reasoning to, to have good cause, then you just tell them, sorry, we're not gonna have a hearing this year. You can always object next year. Um, questions? Any questions from the board? Uh, Alder Journey. So um, is the property owner um, informed about the uh, September 29th meeting and the letter that they will receive? Or is there another way of public notification? Good question. Uh, yes, the letter that I'm sending out with the assessment changes does include the dates for the open book and the September 29th Board of Review meeting. Um, it's a standard format letter. Uh, there's information on the back side as well that, um, that is 
standard language from the Wisconsin Department of Revenue that's supposed to be on every notice of assessment. And then we're also including another informational insert in with the notices with a little bit more information to help the property owner understand the process. So it should be very clear um, how they need to make an objection that we're asking them to come to open book first um, and even how to find all the, the information that's out there. Um, are these available online anywhere? The, um, we can make the assessment role available online. I think that's been our standard process. Uh, Associated Appraisal has a, uh, a website where we've made assessment roles available as PDFs so you can look them up. Um, maybe it's a little easier if you're familiar with uh, the Access Dane system. The county will update the Access Dane system with these preliminary assessed values within a few days after the notices of assessment go out. It, it takes them, I think, about three to five days after I give them the information for them to get it up on their website. But at some point, um, you'll be able to look up any of these uh, 2020 assessed values on okay. there, even before they're finalized at Board of Review. Yeah, if it's on Access Dane, that's, that's great. Uh, so. Claire Clark? Yes, I just wanted to mention that we will have all of that information on our city website as well. The notices are also um, in all of our normal places on the website, Miller's, the library, here at City Hall. In fact, they're posted in three places here at City Hall. So if anybody has any questions, or they can always call us too if they have any questions. Uh, other questions from the board? I guess I have one more. Oh, sorry, uh, Alder Ryan. Thanks. Um, I think I have three quick questions, just so I'm uh, new to this. So my first question was, what's the normal frequency of assessments and how did it come to be that we're nine years behind or if, if we're behind? Well, the, the big cities like Milwaukee and Madison, they will keep their assessments updated every year for market conditions, but it's typical for smaller cities, villages and towns to only update their assessments once every five to seven years. Department of Revenue recommends no later than once every 10 years or no longer than that. Um, and, uh, um, and so this is normal that people get used to the assessments being lower than market value. They get used to um, not having assessment changes. And then when you're in the position that we're in and the assessments are more than 25% you know, below market value, well then, you get a big increase all at once, but it doesn't correspond necessarily to a tax increase. All right. Um, do we know um, when the notice of assessments should be received by folks, roughly? I'll be mailing them out on Friday. And so um, if post office runs normally, I would think by Monday. By Monday? Okay. Yeah. That's, a, that's a big if. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, and then my last question was, uh, just in your experience, I'm curious what, um, if someone does, uh, well, first of all, I, I, I presume it's unlikely that they, that folks who object typically are successful, but supposing they are, what, what types of variances are you accustomed to seeing, I assume, like in the ones and twos percent or, or less? As far as the number of, of objections or? Uh, no, no, in the, in the assessed value versus, you know, whatever they've come up with themselves. I'm just oh. curious. Well, you know, I'm not sure if I'm answering the question you're asking or not, but you know, I'll get people that kind of, that think that they can kind of um, negotiate. They'll they'll start low and they'll try to meet in the middle somewhere. And sometimes I have to remind property owners that this isn't a negotiation. This is, you know, I need to to assess the property based on data and based on analysis. And in the world of real estate not everything is black and white numbers. I mean, people buy property with the emotions involved and there's things like curb appeal and that's hard to, hard to sometimes quantify. Um, so sometimes there's a range of value that can, I can settle on, but, um, but yeah, I mean, um, I've seen everything from the property owner asking for me to cut their assessment down by 50% to only minor requests of a couple thousand dollars. So I really, I think I've seen it all. Yep. Thank you. Um, about oh, Alder Posey. Thank you. Uh, for the other cities, I have a kind of a current situation question with using technology to do this. How do we or have other cities face this situation? Because it's not like public comment where we say, okay, come again next time and share with us what your thoughts are. Have we run into issues or have you run into issues? Anybody with 
technical issues or anything like that that we have to start taking into account where we need to plan on that? Well, um, I think we're trusting technology a lot to try to do this um, completely virtually, but it has been done. Um, some of the other cities that, that I work with this year have successfully had board of review with hearings uh, fully remotely. Um, I think we need, to, we need to be ready just in case there are audio issues or, or something like that. I think worst case scenario, if, if we have really bad technical issues that we can't get over, um, worst case would be to schedule hearings on another day and reconvene for hearings at another time. I'm hoping that doesn't have to happen. I would sure like to get it done all in one night if we can. But it's doable. Uh, Mr. Sayer? And we also have call in numbers for this as well. So if all of a sudden someone's internet just completely crashes, there is a call in number that we could, we could do the audio that way. And I suppose if we did have a request for an accommodation on this, we could potentially accommodate here at City Hall in the council chambers with one of our laptops with the appropriate protocols in place. So we, we have some options if it, if it kind of falls apart on us. Um, you know, Zoom was down this morning. That's the bigger fear we would have if there's an outage again in Zoom. But um, I think we have a couple options. If, if the video fails, I think we probably push to the telephone idea first and then last resort, potentially having the person come down here. And between Ellen and myself, we could put something together and figure it out. Um, <laughs> about how long should we, we budget on Tuesday? Like, is it gonna be like a two hour meeting, 10 hour meeting? Like, what are we? It all depends on how many hearings we end up with. Um, in my experience, the hearings tend to last 20 to 30 minutes. And then, um, and then you, you have to deliberate as well, which can either go quickly or can take some time. Um, but um, it really boils down to how many hearings we have. If we get really lucky and we have, you know, only one or two hearings, then yeah, we could have a, a two hour meeting or less than a two hour meeting. If we have 10 hearings, well, and we might be there fairly late. Okay, and this could spill over for a couple of days. If you know, if like twenty people, let's say, want to re want to argue it, you know, there's no way we can get that done in an evening. Right. The board can uh, adjourn to a, another day to finish the hearings. That's an option at, at that point. Okay. I'll be my best to to not let that happen, but um, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, you know, people, people, people have the right to object, and if they just choose to exercise, it doesn't necessarily reflect on, on anyone other than the person just feeling like they need to prove a point. I guess, I guess, my final question too is: nobody ever appeals that their assessment should be higher, right? It's everyone who's afraid of paying too much taxes and they want their assessment to come down, right? You know, it's not unheard of that somebody okay. wants their assessment increased. Um, maybe they're getting ready to sell and they think that having a higher assessment is going to help them sell the house for more which i don't believe is necessarily true but um i have had people come in and ask for their assessments to be raised by the board of review and then i'm in the position of defending why I'm, i won't do that so great uh any more questions see seeing none uh thank you very much one more thing, I just want to say to everybody, I'm, a lot of people tell me during this time of year when we have assessment appeals, wow, Mr. Assessor, you have a really hard job. I would never want your job. But I sometimes feel the same way at Board of Review because it can be very difficult um, making a decision on someone's property value, um, especially if you feel sorry for the person and they just don't have any information justifying a change. But um, but I, I think your jobs are, are difficult as well in, in your role as Board of Review members. and. Uh, um, I guess uh, we're, we're all in this together and I guess all of us in one way or another are representing the city. Well said. Um, with that, we'll move on to item six, which is adjournment, a motion to adjourn to Tuesday, September 29th, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. would be in order. So moved. Motion by uh, Alder Touche, is there a second? Second. Second, second I think by Alder Journey. I saw the box light up. Uh, all those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. And we are adjourned uh, until Tuesday, September 29th, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. Um, and, and the time of adjournment right now is 6.31 p.m. I will see you all at 7. Thanks. <laughs>